this is a tutorial for test 5 which is tomorrow so uh, let's pay attention the first concept I'm going to probably go over is the electric field so we talked about many times uh, let's consider HRs uh, you can call it Q1 and there will be field lines coming out from these charge and the field lines getting smaller and smaller as it goes further and further from the charge Q1 can create E1 and uh, so um, it goes all direction radially for that matter okay however Q1 cannot create F1 uh, so and there are two way you can find the field and one is let's say you want to find the field at location one location no let's say this is the location one this is the location two and this is the location three how can you find it two way you can find it number one e is equal to q2 uh, f2 over q2 f2 over q2 but there is no q2 how can you f i mean so you have to introduce another charge and that is a small q that's a small q all right and you're going to call q2 and q2 there would be a force vector and the force coming from the q2 would be at the direction same direction as the e1 okay so this this is the this is the main idea so this is the equation I'm going to find you the e1 and that equation I'm going to find you e1 is k bq over r square or you can call q1 that's going to get you the electric field and force you can find force by of course um, I don't know uh, let's say um, e and q okay so please uh, pay attention uh, to these uh, equations and also the graph would look like this is the radius so this is the radius r distance away the charge so the graph would look like if this is r and this is the electric field this would look like what does that mean when r is small the electric field is bigger when r is very big the electric field is this is not quite correct so this it should approach to zero it should approach to zero like this so when r is very big electric field is very small all right so this is the concept one really i want you to pay attention to concept number two we probably gonna go over right now so I'm gonna give you a plate positive 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 and I'm gonna give you a plate negative 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 so uh, that when that creates the electric field electric field goes from positive to negative okay so if this is the case then let's say I'll give you the electric field which is I don't know 50 coulomb and let's say there is a charge over here positive charge right there is a charge over here positive charge and by the way this electric field also create the also create the also create the force so these are the electric field and these are the force vector force vector is always at the direction of the electric field good so now I have a charge over here and let's say this charge is this charge is this charge is this is small q this charge is i don't know let's say 50 50 micro coulomb i want you to find the mass of these of this object of this charge which is at rest okay so this charge is now at rest in the middle of the air it rests it doesn't move up it doesn't move down it doesn't go to the right it doesn't go to the left so uh, what we can do we can bring this over here of course uh, it doesn't work like that not a problem uh, so I'm gonna put put it over here plus and I'm gonna put this uh, vectors and that would be the e vectors and there would be a 
gravitational vector and that would be Fg. So, Fg pulling it down and Fe pulling it up. So, the net force is 0. So, the charge did at rest right there. All right. So, okay. So, how can you find the mass? We can say Fg is equal to Fe. So, Mg is equal to um, Fe is Eq. So, G is uh, not G. We don't want to find G. We want to find M Eq over, of course, the G. E is 50,000 and Q is uh, 50 times 10 raised to negative 6 divided by 9.8. So, 5 times 10 raised to 4 times 5 times or point rather 0.5 times 10 raised to negative 4 divide by 9.8. So, negative 10 raised to 4, 10 raised to negative 4 cancel, 5 times 0.5 is 2.5 divide by 9.8 and that is 0 0.26 kilogram. That means this guy is 0 0.26, I can write better, 0 0.26 kilogram. Now, if it is heavier than 0 0.26 kilogram for example 0 0.27 kilogram then it will start falling if it is lighter than for example 0 0.26 kilogram then it's going to be moving up because then there would be a net force upward direction okay this is the concept two you're going to be paying attention to concept three you're going to be paying attention to is let's say i have um i have uh uh, this is the earth and then I have a satellite over here okay and satellite mass is 1.1 1 .1, uh, times 10 raised to 4 kilogram and satellite uh, the force acting on the satellite is 9.1 .1 times 10 raised to 4 uh, Newton and then the satellite is from the surface of the earth is 5.7 meter all right, I wanted to find the G force. Now, one thing you know on the surface of the earth, this is the surface of the earth. Right here is the surface of the earth. G is 9.81 meter per second squared. However, if you go further and further, G is smaller and smaller. So, this much above the ground, G is over here, right here, is less than 9.8 one of course however exactly what it is we're gonna have to do the math so let's do the math we're gonna do it two different ways and you have to pay attention to fast is the easy one g field is f over m so 9.1 times 10 raised to 4 divided by 1.1 times 10 raised to 4 and then 10 raised to 4 10 raised to 4 cancel 9.1 so decimal decimal cancel 91 divided by 11 is 8.3 meter per second square which is easy now we're going to do a different way so then this is let's say this is the earth right and this is the earth radius the earth radius is i don't know uh six three seven eight one two three meter and then the distance from the surface of the earth to the satellite is five six one two three four so we're going to add them up we're going to say zero and then zero and then zero and then eight and then six so this is the this is the this is the center of the earth to the surface from the surface to the plane is satellite is this one so now let's find the the g force right here so g force is f equal to f of course all right so mg is equal to g m m over r square now m m cancel m of the satellite m of the uh, m of the m of the satellite cancel why when you drop two things this is 500 gram and this is 250 gram if i drop them both and they both would experience same uh, acceleration due to gravity 9.8 they will fall at the same rate and they will touch the ground at the same time because mass doesn't really matter okay 
so the mass of the satellite really doesn't matter if you double the mass of the satellite it will still experience the same g force okay so keep that in mind the math of the uh, mass of the earth is that what matters so g is equal to 6.67 times 10 raised to negative 11 times 6 times 10 raised to 24 which is the mass of the earth and radius is we just found it 6938000 is square and then the g is of course 8.3 meter per second is square as we calculated over here much easy so this is another concept i'm going to try to make it tricky for you so that you do not get confused during the test the second the fourth concept you want to pay attention to is i'm going to triangularize the electric field just like i triangulize the electric force so let's triangulize the electric field okay how can i do that i'm going to put um, one uh, one for uh, one one charge over here another charge over here so uh, let's draw the triangle first i don't like this color okay so let's triangulize it all right so i have three charges so let's call this one uh, p1 uh, q1 q1 is seven microcoulomb and let's call this one is this one is uh, this one is uh, q2 q2 this one is q2 q2 is negative 5 microcoulomb and let's call this one is p this one p p is a small positive charge i want to find i want to find the electric field uh, right here the direction of the electric field if this one and this one distance is 0.4 meter and this one and this one distance is 0.3 meter and this one and this one distance is 0.5 a meter okay so what we need to find we want to find the direction of the electric field uh, mag uh, electric field over there so uh, let's make a guess so number one guess number one would be um, uh, this direction guess number two would be this direction guess number three three would be this direction all right so um, we're going to choose this one is because the final direction of the electric uh, field would be that direction but you will get to see why we choose the one we choose okay so fast fast and foremost we're going to find e1 so e1 is k q1 over r squared so k is 9 times 10 raised to 9 of course and then times q1 is 7 times 10 raised to negative 6 divided by 0 0.16 and that is of course 4 0 0 uh, 400,000 newton over coulomb all right so this uh, this is uh, this is this one okay good and then e2 would be k q2 over r is square and that would be 9 times 10 raised to 9 times 5 we are taking the magnitude so uh, we don't care about the sign over here 5 times 10 raised to negative 6 divided by 0 0.25 is equal to 180 180,000 newton over coulomb right so now this one is repulsive why this one is repulsive repulsive the, see this one is repulsive because this is positive and this is positive so this is positive and this is also this is negative so positive positive repel so this one is repulsive so this is the one we are talking about so this is the 400,000 one so I'm going to move this one over here so this is our 400 400,000 over here this is between P and Q1 of course this is uh, attractive this one is attractive attractive why this one is attractive because p and q2 is attractive because this is positive and this is negative so this one is 180,000 newton okay uh, newton coulomb of course uh, now this one has only one component and this uh, uh, y direction this one has two component this one has two component x direction and of course the of course the y direction y direction is opposite to the red so y direction is this one so if we find the y direction then you have to subtract it to the red so y direction is how much so we can use f 
f is equal to x and y so x has to be i'm going to give you the angle so let's say 53.1 if this angle is 53.1 angle we in order to measure the angle we have to draw a x-axis imaginary x-axis and with respect to x-axis we're going to measure the angle counterclockwise and that would be the same 53.1 53.1 so if i do that 180,000 cosine 53.1 I get 108,000 cosine 53.1 53.1 53.1 is equal to sine sine 53.1 that would be equal to 143943 143943 right now this one is why is this one this one this one so if this one is 143943 three, then red minus black would be this much and what would be this much red minus black is the red because the red one is bigger so let's not forget that so this would be the red and let's find the magnitude of this one this one is 400,000 400,000 minus 1439432560057 so this is 25 uh, this is 25 256057 and the other one is of course uh, is still the is still the same the other one is still the the same the other one is, is still the same and that is x so how much is the x x is of course uh, of course one zero uh, one uh, x is of course um of course um one zero eight zero seven five one zero eight zero seven five so this is our resultant and uh, our resultant would be this one this is our resultant and we said that the resultant would be this direction in the beginning yeah that's right so the resultant would be the pythagorean theorem uh, you know the e would be uh, 256057 square plus 108075 square and 7930 all right now we got to find the angle so now we know this one now we have to find the angle this angle all right or this angle for that matter so the angle is tangent theta is equal to uh, y over x y over x so theta is equal to tangent inverse <laughs> Y is uh, Y is this one two five six zero five seven, and the X is uh, one uh, one zero eight zero seven five. So this is sixty seven degree. So this angle is sixty seven degree. The entire tutorial. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.